Busted. Hello out there, and thanks for joining us on Political Platform uh, this uh, a beautiful uh, day. And uh, we have, uh, as usual, all the reports for you, updates on current political developments in Nigeria. And uh, we have uh, the analysis of those uh, uh, very key developments. We also have your mails, politicalplatform at yahoo.com, the route to reach us. And uh, we have very many exciting uh, uh, mails this morning to also share. But uh, just before uh, we go to those mails, let me just quickly tell you the highlights of uh, the developments and uh, some of them we will actually be talking about. The acting president, Emil Shibajo, continued with his uh, national peace building and consensus amongst the ethnic uh, nationalities leaders uh, and regional leaders in Abuja yesterday. And of course, uh, you know he meant uh, earlier with uh, those from the north it was the turn of the southeastern uh, leaders, political leaders, uh, leaders of thought, and those who can indeed talk to a uh, cross-section of uh, the Easterners, as you want to put it, uh, those who will assist us to douse the tension that is up. We'll be telling you about this uh, meeting, and so many people have been asking, why is it that the order of the, uh, of, uh, the Cardinal State uh, Government the police, as well as the pronouncement by the pres uh, acting president on those who uh, issued the October 1 deadline for the Igbos to move out from the north, why are they not arrested? We have been talking with a cross-section of security uh, leaders, uh, the leaders of security agencies, and they have been giving us reasons why they have not moved. We tried hazarding a guest yesterday, if you listen to us. It does appear that we're actually very, very correct. But we'll be telling you some of those reasons why the security agencies, the police, the DSS, and the others are not really swift, are not going around arresting people who are making, uh, the, who made those threats. And the Senate president was freed of all charges at this Code of Conduct Tribunal yesterday. And uh, it is one that ended nearly two years of uh, uh, the intrigues, uh, the kind of thing that wrapped up in the confusion as to what relationship the executive and the judicial, uh, the, uh, the legislature had. But at the end of the day, on ruling on, the, on a no-case submission, the tribunal said uh, Saraki could go a free man. And one of those reasons, and we, we should be debating this one on our, on our program today, one of those things that we have been asking for that should be done to douse all the tensions and make it possible for Nigerians to begin to talk uh, forward is the call by yesterday by the Senate for the 2014 CONFAB report to they have been given to them from by the executive. They are asking for it. They say the time that the former president, Good Lord Jonathan, submitted it just a week or two before the close of a session, they couldn't take a look at it. It is believed that if the National Assembly can be seized of this document once again, they can begin to take a look at it and look at those key areas that we immediately help to solve the problem. Those who are agitating for separation, those who are agitating for uh, restructuring could indeed find reasons to come uh, to to table and we know which to pick and which to leave behind. My name is Okiri Agbon Suremi. I'm expecting Kola Ologbon uh journalist and editor, and uh, who will be joining us to, for on the analysis today. He's uh, expected to join us uh, as, soon as, he, as soon as possible. But meanwhile, as we wait for him, I will go to I go, go to introduce my uh, my colleagues here, uh, Dr. Amicha Nakuis, uh, right here in the studio. Amicha, welcome. Hello, and welcome to the program. And I have Uju AJ on the program this morning. Uju, welcome to the program. Thank you, Hiri. Now uh, let's uh, go to our mailbox, political platform at yahoo.com. Let's see who is talking to us this morning. Welcome to the mail segment. I am Ife Inwanwobi. I am Osaiti Yari. Welcome. Reacting to the latest developments from the Code of Conduct Tribunal, Dixon Eka in Abuja starts by saying. As expected, the Senate President, Dr. Bukola Saraki, was discharged and acquitted of all the 18-count corruption charges bordering on false asset declaration 
just like all other corruption cases in the country. Is it not surprising how the current administration used body language in fighting corruption and actions taken on the pages of newspapers? More than two years of this administration, whose major agenda was to fight corruption, no case has been established against anybody. What would have happened if Saraki had resigned his position, as many of us clamored for? The best way to fight corruption is to strengthen the anti-corruption institutions. I therefore call on the federal government to take the right steps by strengthening the anti-corruption institutions in the country, including the judiciary. If the fight is to be won, may God help our country. Collins Aze in Kubwa writes on the state of the nation. He says, Dear crew, I want to commend the acting president, Professor Yemio Simbanjo, for steps taken so far to douse the tensions generated by recent activities in Nigeria. Worthy of note is the assurance and reassurance that all sections of the country will, will be protected irrespective of ethnic and religious inclinations. Marrying that to the plans by the Senate to start debate on the 2014 conference report, it is obvious that we are getting close to restructuring which is the only solution to our problem as a nation. I enjoin the federal government to liaise with the National Assembly, state governments, and all other relevant institutions to come up with a positive blueprint on the way forward. God bless Nigeria. More on the platform's analysis, Otusaya in Abuja says, Thank you, crew members, for your analysis on the issue of the road safety, introducing psychiatric treatment to traffic offenders. I think it's a good idea. But honestly, I think the policy should be extended to financial and economic crimes so that corrupt individuals should have their brains tested. Long live Nigeria. That's it on the mail segment today. Keep sending your mails to political platform at yahoo.com. Busted! They present the popular radio program, Political Platform, on the Ray Power FM network. Ray Power FM Political Platform, now on television. Keep track of the country's polity and be part of the process as they discuss and put political developments in the country into perspective. It's Ray Power Political Platform on AIT Abuja. Yeah, beautiful one there. And uh, I think we should just start by uh, telling you that uh, Ray Power Abuja is 18 years today. Uh, they're rolling out the drums today, uh, would you? Okay. Uh, we should see the drums rolled out today. Uh, we should, and uh, not just the drums, uh, you know, the red carpets. And a lot of things to celebrate with Terry Power Abuja. Of course, you know, when we left Lagos, when we were transferred to uh, Abuja from Lagos, uh, it fell on Ray Power Abuja to continue to host a uh, political platform. So we moved political platforms uh, presentation point to Abu Abuja from uh, Lagos, and subsequently it was also connected back to the network, and Lagos started to uh, enjoy. So we have a, a lot of uh, things to celebrate with the uh, arrival of uh, uh, Ray Power. I think it was the first private station. Yes, it was the first private yes, the station, very, the premier, uh, the premier uh, station in uh, Abuja. And uh, it uh, made Abuja like uh, people never really expected. First of all, we started by sending the signals of uh, Repa from Abuja to uh, from Lagos to Abuja. Then it had no studio. Uh, it was just the same content that were that Abuja was getting that was in Lagos. And uh, but with time, uh, the station established itself, and today it is number one in the city. With so many radio stations here, and with so many people uh, now taking radio as their uh, second, uh, you know, the partner that you have to be with, uh, Ray Power has not failed. I would just uh, uh, are, are, are grateful to all those who have listened to us, who have contributed one way or the other to, to help us uh, stabilize the station at the nation's uh, capital. And of course, you know that uh, it is one uh one uh, uh, happiness one uh, feat that we could not have got to without uh, you out there so we are excited to be 18 years the first one the first radio station in the nation's uh, capital and we are excited the first private the private radio. private station when we say first we just assume that we are just number one everything <laughs> but we must just put it there well caller nobody is uh, right here is joining us caller welcome to the program your 
your phones were not going and I was waiting. I was oh, yeah, waiting. Why are you talking about phones? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, these days they say they switch off phone. You, you did you hear the audio conversation that was purportedly to be between Governor Shetima and one only Borno State. State Governor? And I, I, I was I listened to it over five, six times over again and I was wondering why the Bono State government took such a long time to come up with a statement that that is not the voice of their governor and it is not correct to assert that it is the governor's voice because uh, uh, it had gone viral everybody has having it and people are getting scared uh, can this be coming from a governor uh, talking about the Igbos this way and the north and the south uh, divide but the state government has issued a statement saying look that is a figment of the imagination of somebody those who produced it it is not the governor's voice anybody who knows the governor who hears the governor's voice will know that it is not the governor's voice of course it is also one of those things that are all over the social media so many things are going on and it is just for the the relevant agencies to come up as they are coming up they are they, they, they are coming up they are quickly dousing them and denying them and preventing people educate the people there's no need to panic anybody over some of these disagreements that we have there's nothing we can do about nigeria being one anybody who is contemplating nigeria being divided is just wasting his time because all we need to do is to sit down and talk about how we can live together peacefully and ensure our prosperity Kunle, uh, uh, Kola. Oh, yeah. First, let me congratulate um, Ray Power for being 18 today. and to, In Abuja. In Abuja. And to further commend your efforts, particularly the political platform. Um, talking about uh, the governor of um, uh, Boronu mm -hmm. State and the governor of Ogun State, I was privileged to be in the National Assembly, to be a reporter in the National Assembly when Governor Moson was a senator. Yes. So I covered him for four years. I know his nature and I know the way he speaks. And I know that Governor Moses is not somebody that you talk down on. You keep that will keep listening to you. Uh, we just agree. I will just agree, agree with everything they are saying. He doesn't yeah. have that patience. <laughs> that is not his style. And I, I, I think I can say I'm one of the uh, uh, privileged Nigerians who work with him and even traveled with him during his campaigns. So I know the way he speaks. Oh, oh here, like you so said, I agree. Uh, it, it took some time before even the Bruno State government. Uh, uh, came out to deny that uh, before then like you said it got vi it went viral in the social media it's been shared reshared and uh, rebroadcasted uh, they wasted so much time such a a, a dangerous thing uh, should not be allowed to you know uh, be distributed freely that's why i'm always encouraging governments uh, to be part of the social media uh, they should show presence in the social media so that when the fake news comes, they are, quickly, uh, they are there that is, also yeah. put in Im almost immediately the main news, the, the original news, so that uh, citizens will indeed uh, place the two on the table and make a decision for themselves. I just listened once to new to, to know that it wasn't from uh, uh, Shetim and Ibukula and Muslim. It was so clear. But can you say of that for millions of other Nigerians? I can tell you that so many people believed it that it came from them so with the governments must do uh, must be swift in responding to uh, okay yeah somebody forwarded that um, audio recording to me and immediately i listened i had to quickly tell them i have interviewed shetima i know his voice i said this is not shetima's voice that was what i answered in in that group i said this cannot be shetima because i know shetima to be someone who chooses his words yeah, picks his words yes, he doesn't, he doesn't he just, doesn't uh, just talk like that i have i have been with him on one on one so i i know and i just quickly tell them please disregard this recording this is not shetima's voice and uh, in line with what amichi said it is not good for government officials or their aides at times to just uh, regard something as inconsequential and just push it uh, aside because at times when you ask them to react they tell you mm, that one it will not last it will go away mm -hmm. but you see that it keeps gathering momentum now, I there, think there, they there, should always be swift there's, there, there's, the, there's the other one now we, we are talking about and we have yesterday started to let the people know why even though it's not our job to do now some youths came together and they used arewa house in kaduna to make a pronouncement giving the deadline of october one for the Igbos to vacate then there was a swift reaction from the Cardinal State Governor saying they should be arrested. The police also said they are going to be arrested. Now, they were not arrested. Now, we have asked questions. Our guests yesterday said there's no reason why they should not have been arrested. Now, we tried to profile, but there may be there's a reason. And yesterday, I had to go out making all the phone calls 
to all my friends and contacts in the DSS and the police why were these people not arrested. And the reason that I get from all of them is exactly what we said yesterday. That look, a group of people who are believed to be uh, sponsored by some persons made the pronouncement. They were not immediately arrested. They gave gap. And then the, a group from the southeast issued, uh, started to issue threats. Young people in the southeast. Middle Belt. Middle Belt south, decided south, to issue threats. South, uh, south. Everywhere. They were not threats everywhere. Now, who are they going to arrest? That was what we said yesterday. Now, the most uh, uh, fundamental reason that was offered to me from all the aggregate, aggreg aggregate of all that I could gather is that if they begin to arrest one part, they will have to arrest everybody. Yeah, exactly. So the, the security agencies, the police, the DSS, and all those who are concerned, they have discovered that at the time they should have made the arrest, when it happened immediately, they didn't do it. So they have allowed the whole, the whole thing to fester, and they are not even talking. I, I said, look, let me put you on air so that you can say, no, I don't want to talk. You know, the active president is already in charge. He's meeting with everybody. We don't want to be part of it. But the reason is that which is cogent, and I believe they are also correct, is that they cannot begin to arrest everybody that now make pronouncement against the nation. Because if you arrest the Arewa youth, you will arrest the Afenifere the, uh, youth, you will arrest the the, 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 the middle bed. You have to not begin to uh, arrest everybody. And I believe when the uh, government, the way they are going about it now, when, when it settles down, we should not allow certain things to happen and we don't react to it immediately. I, 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 I want to say that uh, we are giving so much space to the separatist movement, and it is not good for the nation. But, but the decision by the acting president to speak and to make a firm commitment to nationhood yesterday excite. And I also want to commend the Senate for now requesting for the conference um, report. report. Yes. And I think that from there, they can begin to amend the constitution to strengthen federalism and to ensure that the wishes of the people are also included in their decisions as in respect of what we look up to as what Nigeria should be in the future. Now, but the way, we are going, the way we are going, with the way we are going, if something is not done quickly, Something will give oh, Hira, you talked that. about the, the security agencies being swift in response. Now, uh, what was the response of the federal government? Can you describe it as swift? Uh, three days ago, I read Junai Mohammed criticized the acting president to say, I expected you to do a lot that, at, as it were, uh, we are sitting on a landmine. And yeah. 24 hours later, yeah. he responded with the initial meeting of uh, Northern mm -hmm. Elders. Yes. Commendable, though. But uh, talking about being swift, everybody knew that we are in danger but some people will say what do you expect the acting president to say when you get see a release uh, telling people that he has been directed to sign to the budget, the budget yeah. uh, maybe he's waiting for another uh, yeah. direction <laughs> from somewhere these are the issues but uh, beyond that i expected the government and i think uh, the i commend them from initiating these uh, uh, negotiations and dialogue is necessary uh, the way to down tension uh, such as this uh, if people want to talk and are talking openly, you give them the platform, come out, dissipate your energy. The National Conference uh, in 2014, the president said, as far as he's concerned, his job for the boys and it will gather us that he will not even read it. So I, I don't, I, I, I want to expect the reaction from the presidency on the request of the National Assembly that they should forward uh, the recommendation to it as a bill. Now, when you have tensions in the land, you need to reach out, you need to talk. You, you, I expect if I were in government, I would have. I can even initiate a new round of uh, conference, expand it. If the other one was discredited, I announce plans for a new one, and people will start talking uh, I'm positively. I'm I'll be in control of the talks and not leave it to uh, youth groups who are misguided and not aware of uh, the sensitivities of our nation. I take advantage and will see it. I hope if the president. Our executive fails to send that bill uh, to the National Assembly, it should come by way of a private member bill. Exactly. It is one I, I move that will help to restore our I national I, I, I think that uh, what we need now, what the nation needs, is not a new conference because a lot of yeah. people will tell you we have a lot of white papers. What we need is, is implementation of these uh, white papers, the reports that have been presented over the years, even from the 70s to date. 
it, it is a good thing that the Senate has called for the CONFAB report. Mm. I think that's one sure step in the right direction because you had all the ethnic nationalities, you had all the zones represented there, and they were able to negotiate what they believe their people want. And once we have those and they can sift and take what the nation needs, I think we are now, a, a, a now, on now, the right path. Caller, behind the microphone, I mean, outside of microphone, you told me you are a federalist. I am. And uh, you do not, anybody who is talking separate, separate, separatist, uh, it does not, be, you can't belong to I that. Subscribe to that. And uh, when you see the map of uh, uh, Odudua, yeah. you just laugh. Yes. <laughs> because, uh, in fact, that map is very, is very laughable. You know why? I have asked them, the Odudua guys who drew the map, yeah. they, the worry is part of the map. Edo is part of the map. Even <laughs> Lokoja is part of the map of Odudua. And if you see the map of uh, the, the Biafrans, yeah. they even... Kogi, <laughs> they came to Kogi. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're looking at the River Niger, and they're also looking at the Yoruba-speaking people now, now, in Edo now, and Delta. Now, seriously <laughs> speaking, yeah. seriously speaking, yes. this federal structure as it is now, yeah. can it work? I believe the federal system as it is can work. But I am of the opinion that we should go back to the current structure and begin to make amendments through the National Assembly that will capture the needs, the requirements. Because if you look at the Constitution... That is states. Yes, that, yes, that is states. Some people believe that there are some states that cannot stand on their own yes. and that because of homogeneity, they can be merged together. I believe that every state, if, they look, if every state looks inward, they will decide whether they, they decide will. whether they can survive or not. But I there are no provision. There's no provision of referendum. Yes, that is one thing. That yeah. is one thing. There but are I, there are recommendations in the national conference for states well, to merge with others say, if they believe they can't can stand, continue to stand there. Exactly. But my own position is that first and foremost, let the national assembly amend. The, let the nation amend the constitution through the existing national assembly and the state legislatures in a way that referendum. Can be possible. Can be possible. Then we can begin to because no matter the conferences we organize, or person you organize one, president. The, we have the been conferences. Are, there have been conferences. Yeah. There have been conferences. But what has happened to their to their outcome to the recommendations? Until we come back to the basics, go back to the national assembly and say you people should amend the constitution. Take it around the states. If we get twenty four states, yeah, we are there. We are there. Until we do that, we are just sitting around the corner and roving like the Baba's chair. And it's not going to help us <laughs> as a people. And I, I think that more importantly, we should be able to, whatever w structure we decide to adopt, to negotiate the terms of our corporate existence. I think that's where the matter is. So that every part, every section will feel a sense of belonging and would have a sense of belonging in reality oh, in the, terms you know, of you know the, justice, the, fairness and equity. You know the, you know the, the challenge, uh, Uju? The challenge is actually that we have institutions that are up by law by the constitution we have a national assembly yeah. that is why the colors uh, postulations cannot be just be thrown away some persons think that we should just disregard the national assembly mm -hmm. set up a sovereign national conference no, no. That, that that will probably be chaotic now one way to move is the synergy between the executive and the the legislature let them come together and realize that look like we always say on this program the way we have been running we have been running the wrong road on the wrong road with high speed it's not possible for us to get to our destination because we are on the wrong road. Now, the National Assembly, the institutions that we have can come together. How do we... So is, it, is it that color we cannot really sit together and identify with the problems that we have? We, we, know, we even know all the problems. The problem is sitting together. I mean, using the National Assembly as it is. Because it is the only body in the nation established and recognized in the Constitution to make laws for us. So it has a it has a huge responsibility. But do you, are you are you conscious of the fact that many people don't believe that the people uh, the national assembly is not uh, peopled by those who can really solve up? That yeah. the way they, it is constituted, the election into it into the national assembly. I mean, I'm talking for. I understand. You understand what I'm trying to say. So many people don't have confidence that the national assembly can do the job. Let okay. me just summarize it that there, way. There will be another election in 2019. They should send people who are going to represent. Exactly. exactly. It's very simple. Exactly. Okay. We are, so I, if you are dissatisfied with your senator. Then or with your House of Rep member, then you go to go and register, go and get your PV. But we have an urgent job. We have we cannot wait till that election is there before we get some this Who said? Two I mean, years, two years is just too small in the life of a nation. That's just the honest truth. Mm -hmm. it's, too, it's, it's, it's too minute in the life of a nation. Who said we cannot? You see, one thing is this: 
what the social media is doing to the nation now is better left imagined. Yes. The awareness, the consciousness is so huge that anybody who is in government today who thinks that it is in the days where you have to wait for 24 hours to read what the newspapers will say, who thinks that it is in the days where there is no where the broadcast organization of Nigeria will say uh, will say that I ah, know you are not supposed to bring this out. Why did you report this? Why do you say we are far gone beyond mm -hmm. that age? We are in an age where if something happens immediately right away in the farthest part of Bayesa, the man in Sokoto will pick up his phone and read through. We must accept these facts and these realities. Oh, okay, we are, I still think that um, we still we will have to look into the foundation. That's the elections because this from there we have problems. And if you go to states today, we are concentrating too much on at, on the center, center yeah. be, because there's so much power there. If you devolve power to the state and make the state gov gov governors responsible, tell the people, let your state governor tell you what he is doing. And on election day, the people will now use that to vote. So well, states it, don't it, even it, it know what it boils down to true federalism. Yeah, it boils yes. down to true federalism. Yes. And, and it boils yes. down to true the recommendations of the of national, national conference. conference. There were many uh, recommendations that were... Uh, there was no voting. Uh, the, the, the beautiful thing about that conference was that most of the decisions were, were consensus. by consensus. That means almost everybody accept, accepts that indeed this is the way we should go. It wasn't even through voting. So we need to go back to that national conference. They did a lot of work. They uh, split into thematic groups, experts in different fields. They came up with recommendations. And if you implement a quarter of their recommendations, the can tell you will go down. all the tensions will go down and Nigeria will be on I the I will not allow Kola to go. I will not allow Kola to go without uh, uh, taking him to his state, Kogi, and particularly his uh, uh, constituency. Because the reason I want to drag yeah, you... Why, why you no, the reason I want to tell you why I will drag <laughs> you to it. Because Kola once uh, picked up a nomination form. He wanted to go to the House of Representatives. Yeah. And you know what happened to him? Yeah. Kola, you were trounced. <laughs> <laughs> Let me give you the ticket. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know if he has the idea, but uh, the your senator and the former senator they are at war. Yeah. Uh, uh, Smart Adeyemi and uh, Dino Melai, and incidentally they are from your very constituency. And the governor is also finger. What is happening in Kogi State? Hmm. Hmm. It's all political. It's all political. It's all politics. It's politics. It's all political. I, I don't know. I think it all started from the APC, but it has expanded, and various interests are now coming in to 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 profit from the situation. But I keep praying for those of us who are not who are neutral now. Who are neutral now? We are just praying that God will just help us and let it be peace. Because what we are asking for now is peace. Are the ordinary people in those constituencies? Do they know what is happening? Are they sucked into this uh, crisis? Yeah, they are. Everybody, every co guide knows what is happening. For instance, if you are being old, if people are being old salaries, yes. the people in the market cannot sell. If people are sacked from their job, yeah, they will and report they back. And they have not even been told that they have been sacked. They will naturally report back. So what we are praying for is that when the government said that it will continue to review the screening exercise, we just hope it continues to review. Let more people be taken back into the system. I think the civil service has a way. I think the most dangerous aspect of it is where people have been now being shot and killed. That is my that's yeah, that's that's, a, a, that's that, the most dangerous aspect yeah. of it. And you know, smart smart just went into the uh, APC, the crisis. And they actually they are actually all of them in, in APC. A, all of them are an, it's an APC thing. The PDP is not talking about it. It's purely an APC thing. Hmm. The people in PDP are just watching, watching. So the, and the they are just waiting for 2020 to come. Kogi. <laughs> but Akira, you should know where this whole problem started. Yeah, I could, I can imagine, but you know, I'm not from that constituency, so there are things that I probably wouldn't know. That's why well, I, I think you. I will speak to you off the camera. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm outside the microphone. <laughs> I'm outside the microphone. Uh, you can also join in this uh, the, uh, debate through political platform at But, but uh, Kola, I know we bear it all here. Yes. And we owe it to our listeners to yeah. tell them the color yes. of the, of the water, water under the bridge. Let them <laughs> just allow peace to reign. Yeah, the, first, the, the most important, most important thing. thing in Kogi today is for peace yeah. to reign. Because it's gotten to a level where we are now hearing gunshots. There were gunshots before, but there were no things that were in the open. They were but just under we're, the we're not seeing it. But there. now we are seeing it. That, that means that we cannot even have rallies. 
<laughs> you know we are going. That means there will be no rallies. That means there will be no rallies. You understand? It's a, it's so a that's, a, that's a worrisome very aspect. Dangerous. That's a dangerous mm -hmm. uh, aspect of it. But we just hope that there will be peace. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Kola Olobondion, editor and uh, uh, political uh, correspondent and editor for a very, very long time. My very uh, close uh, uh, friend. And uh, always saying it the way uh, he sees it. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. And uh, when we come back tomorrow, we expect your message through political platform at Let's do it, uh, do it again tomorrow when we come back. Busted.